India, the land of devotion, has emerged as a cultural colossus today. With more than 3 million religious places, there is one site of worship for every 400 people, highlighting an indispensable part of every Indian's life. With numerous religions, this diversity is united by purity and beauty, otherwise called flowers. We attach a sacred sentiment to these beautiful flowers, be it as means of offering to deities or to grace holy places. Flowers play a significant role in the land of worshippers. Indian weddings, known for their vivacity and extravagance, owe it to the vibrant blossoms for adding beauty and appeal to the promising occasion. However, these symbols of purity have the potential to shift from delicacy to deadly, thus turning into a hazard if managed inadequately. 8 million tons of floral waste is generated every day, accounting for one third of the total floral waste in India. The pesticides and chemicals on these flowers contaminate the water quality as the noxious substances leach into water bodies. The decaying waste releases greenhouse gases, which leads to lower oxygen levels, thus hampering marine life. Eight major river systems in India with more than 400 rivers, yet 40 million litres of wastewater is dumped in these rivers every day and only a fraction of it is fairly treated. After conducting surveys across Delhi and CR, we discovered that less than 7% of religious institutions properly disposed of floral waste and only 3% knew its environmental hazards. Due to such unnoticed problems, River Yamuna, which catered to more than 70% of Delhi's water supply, was declared ecologically dead by the United Nations in 2017. Woeful from such a dreadful impact, we moved from a state of oblivion to a state of being conscious. In 2019, we at Anaktas Arabat set out on a mission. A mission to give new life to these flowers while providing an umbrella solution to the problems of water pollution, inadequate floral waste management and fast fashion by launching Project Balash. Aimed at providing sustainable solutions, we utilize the floral waste generated in religious places, flower mundis and weddings by converting it into natural dyes and various other organic products including compost, candles and colors. Three years ago, we decided to walk on the path of sustainability and redefine the practices of fast fashion. Diving deep into the archives of Indian history, we realized how natural dyeing was a common practice. A small town in Rajasthan, Bagru, the hub of natural dyeing, captured a large market with its organic products. However, this practice witnessed a decline with the discovery of toxic chemical dyes which are cheaper and largely available. To revive this long lost art and bring a revolution in the fashion industry, we saw the membership of Mrs. Madhurima Singh, the founder of sustainable fashion label Dhuri. In sessions and extensive research about various dyeing techniques and designs, we perfected the process of making dye vats by using hard seeds as dye fixators. Tapping into the environmentally conscious consumer market, we launched an exquisite apparel line offering a range of elegant naturally dyed dupattas, t-shirts, kurtas and scarves. To implement our vision and make the most out of this journey, we conducted a detailed community analysis and collaborated with Stop NGO, enabling the survivors of human traffic. Stigma associated with their past acts as an obstacle in leading a respectful life. More than 70% of these survivors were unskilled, reducing their chances of getting a job. Making entrepreneurs out of our beneficiaries and uplifting people pan-India, we collaborated with an indoor-based self-help group, BGMS. We trained them in techniques such as tie and dye, leheria, ombre and block printing, monitoring their progress through an extensive training module. After successfully running our apparel line and gaining proficiency in the art of natural dyeing, we realized the potential for a much larger social, environmental and economic impact. We ventured into offering natural dyeing services to various fabric manufacturers with the aim to achieve economies of scale. In February 2022, we were approached by JP Clothing, a garment manufacturer based in Tirupur, Tamil Nadu, to natural dye organic cotton for them. In an effort to rekindle the dyeing handloom industry, we collaborated with Loomki and Bunny Handicrafts, two Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh based enterprises, thus empowering more than 350 artisans. We procure handloom cotton from these skillful workers, add a spirit of palash by dyeing their textiles, and give new life to these fabrics while providing them with streamlined market access. Products reach our customers in sustainable packaging, thus eliminating the need of single-use plastic packaging. Hence, each and every step from procurement to delivery follow eco-friendly methods. Capitalizing on the seasonal surge of floral waste and consumer demand, we carried out various seasonal campaigns helping people change the way they celebrate festivals. Stepping into the light with Balash, we executed Utsa where we enhanced the gleam of Diwali by making scented candles using soy wax infused with floral aroma, providing a greener alternative to the pollution-causing paraffin wax. Strengthening our bond with sustainability, we initiated Bandhan during Raksha Bandhan to naturally dye yarn and handcraft rakhis. 
Transforming the vibrant hues of our dyes into vibrant hues of celebration, we came up with Aveer, our annual Holi campaign. Throughout our three-year-long journey, we have regularly conducted complementary product and market analysis to exploit growth opportunities. In order to further capture and efficiently manage the sheer quantum of floral waste in India, we undertook the practice of composting, providing our customers with yet another greener alternative. To facilitate this venture, we formed a synergic collaboration with Green Bandhu. The compost made from floral waste was soil tested to find that it has 30% more nutrients than regular compost and enhances plant growth by 20% using enzymes and names as disinfectants with bioculture and jaggery to speed up the process. Our composting model has been recognized for its efficiency and adopted by Arabic College of Delhi University to process the floral and horticulture waste generated in the campus and nearby areas. With a continuous effort to enhance and refine our supply chain, we were successfully able to set up floral waste collection bins with the help of local administrative bodies at various locations across the area NCR thus increasing our collection capacity from 3,000 to 5,000 kgs per month. While ensuring operational efficiency, our chain of operations follow a systematic approach. Starting from the collection of floral waste from various sources, it is sent to our centers for segregation. About 20% of it is fit for naturally dyeing fabrics, whereas the rest is converted into compost, which goes back to the earth and helps in the regrowth of another flower, thus enabling a circular economy. With the goal to minimize wastage, all the residue, including the water from dye baths, is used as organic fertilizers, thus adopting a zero-waste model. Through our progressive strides, we have successfully been able to cover seven of the 17 SDGs. I found Project Palas is a very truly uh, environmentally friendly and economically sustainable project that recycles floral waste into organic dye. I congratulate budding environmentalist and entrepreneur of Arbat College for their such a unique innovations. Palash follows a dynamic B2B and B2C model. Our B2C model is focused on targeting and acquiring the eco-conscious consumer hotspots while promoting slow fashion. We reach out to our customers through personal selling, sales drive across various locations in Delhi and CR, and through our very own e-commerce website offering Pan-India delivery. Helping to attract and capture a wider audience, our prices have made the transition to a sustainable lifestyle smoother for everyone, increasing our customer retention rate from 70% in 2021 to 80% in 2022. Expanding this further in our B2B model, along with offering natural dyeing services to textile manufacturers, we deal in bulk orders for natural dyed apparels. For organic compost, farmers, nurseries, institutions and housing societies have been our regular customers. Our products are also listed on third-party sustainable e-commerce platforms including Going Zero and EcoFace to enhance our reach. 70% of the profit earned through sales goes to the beneficiaries and the rest is reinvested into the business. Natural dyeing and composting account for 80% of our annual revenue earned while the other 20% is accounted for by our seasonal campaigns. Our revenue, which was Rs 7 lakhs last year, is estimated to grow at a healthy rate of 60%, going from Rs 10 lakhs to Rs 16 lakhs in the next year as we mark our presence in the B2B space and scale up our operations. By sourcing our raw material from wholesale markets and producing in bulk, we have been able to reduce our production costs and offer competitive prices for our products, saving Rs 4 lakhs in cost. Perceiving the extensive use of flowers in the ITRA industry, we decided to explore this arena. Traversing to the roots, we conducted a survey in the perfume capital of India, Kannauj, an ancient city well known for its aromas all around the world, where we learned about techniques for making ITRA. From some of the best craftsmen around the globe, we successfully prototyped multiple batches of ITRA made purely out of flowers like roses, mogra and marigold, which will soon be available in the market. To sensitize people about the social issues that have been plaguing the country, we conducted online sessions with NIF Delhi and YA India and looked beyond the horizon, collaborating with Enactus Azwak of Azerbaijan, Ontario Tech University and Enactus University of City London, taking a step towards global change. We conducted a cleanup drive at the banks of Chandrabhaga, a tributary of the Ganges and Rishikesh, resulting in the collect and proper disposal of 1000 kilograms of waste. We also conducted vaccination drives, volunteered at healthcare camps and helped organize regional summits. Recently, we joined hands with Delhi government to establish self-help groups in Nazapur and provide sustainable employment opportunities to them through Palash. The strength of the team and the dedication which matters to implement that idea and scale it to achieve its full potential. And that's why I invited uh, the Aryabhat team to work with us in the Najabur constituency of our minister. 
great job. Angul M, affiliated with the Odisha government, recognized our hard work and approached us for repurposing more than 20 tons of textile waste by the end of 2022. We have set up a pilot program with them to source the textile waste and utilize it through batch fashion. Our efforts were also appreciated globally by the Vivere Group, the second largest retail chain in UK, who reached out to us for a potential collaboration. Through our constant devotion and holistic approach, Palaj became a finalist for two years running in MIT Fall under the Resilient Ecosystems Challenge and the Youth Innovation Challenge, while winning the Community Award after competing with 1,800 teams from 148 countries. Emphasizing on undertaking ethical business practices in our venture, we won the KPMG Business Ethic Grants 2021. We made our way to the top four in one race for ocean in an Actus World Cup 2021, where Palash was acknowledged as a novel solution to combat ocean pollution. The same year, we attained the People's Choice Award for the most passionate and innovative projects in the Inactus World Races. Keeping the passion alive, Palash won the Race for Better India under SDG 5, Clean Water and Sanitation. We have also been featured in various national and international publications including Down to Earth, Bachelor and Times of India, assisting us to sensitize the world for our cause and create over 4 million new impressions. Taking confident strides towards social innovation and upliftment, Palash has successfully salvaged 10 tons of floral waste, awarded 1300 litres of chemical pollution and 10 lakh microfibers, reduced over 70,000 kg of carbon emissions, while impacting more than 8,000 lives. In the course of two years, we have created six new businesses, increased income generation by 350%, and generated a revenue of over 15 lakhs. With 10 production centres spread across five states, Palash has created a milestone by walking on a sustainable path that uses creativity with an environmental conscience, providing employment to 500 love benefits. Steve Palash have blossomed every life it has touched, making us believe we all can win. Together, we strive. We achieved. We empowered. We, we are an active and, and this is our story. story.